On this episode of Paleo Man's World, I'd like to touch on the subject of flint drills. I had someone ask me, uh, do I ever make drills? Well, like any flint napper that I've ever talked to, uh, we've always made drills when we had an arrowhead go bad and we just couldn't stop chipping it and we would end up with something like this. Now, I have to believe this happened too in times when they were making these tools and living with them, but I do think they were made by design. This first one that we're looking at here is an Onondaga drill, made out of Onondaga flint chert, however you want to refer to it. And um, I've had this one a while. Actually, I've got a little case with some drills, and that's where these came from. So that's a typical size drill that we might come up with in my area. Here's a little larger Onondaga drill be a really great find if you were in the field and stumbled on this and I I did happen to one time in all the years I've looked find one this this big and, and, and in this good of shape. We could refer to this type as a T drill naturally because it has the shape of the letter T. And down here is uh, a nice little drill. I'm, I'm really not sure the material. I do think it came out of Texas. Some of the oil chert, something like that. And this is another variation. It's all there. Uh, the base was just made to be as it is. And you do see these. Here's one of my favorite styles. And this is made out of some upper Mercer Blue Coshocton um, material out of uh, Ohio. And this would be a great find too. Moving along, uh, a couple more Onondaga drills. Of course, I work a lot of Onondaga and that's why you see lots of Onondaga drills because I just can't give up and I have to keep going until it's in, made into something or, or else it breaks. And this last drill here, a little, little cruder but more realistic looking as far as what we find. And I've got one here that's I think fork pain but I'm not 100% positive. It's a really, really pretty stone and uh, that became a drill. Well, you, you see these drills are pretty much almost all the same size, but uh, from time to time, and let me get a ruler out here, I have made bigger drills because I've had bigger points go bad. Now here's one here uh, that's pretty good size. Now if I put it on the, the thing here, uh, this is a five inch drill. Okay, that's a, that's a big drill and that's a lot of napping to get it down to that. And you see, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty uniform and straight, which is not easy to do. Another T drill. But if you like that drill, prepare yourself for the big monster drill. Now, this point really uh, was one that I couldn't stop. And let's see what we got here. Oh, it's longer than my ruler, so I'm going to say, by the looks of things, this is a 7-inch drill. Now, in a field find, this would be impossible to come up with something like this because naturally the plow. Or, but after seeing Flint Spall's beautiful um, Capena Classic with that uh, needle tip, I guess anything's possible. So here's my biggest drill to date, and I keep this one right in my keeper case. So you probably thought that that's all you're going to get from Paleo Man today is just a bunch of drills. But I do have a surprise for you over here. In the past, I've had different interests and curiosities, and naturally when I have a curiosity, I pursue it. And so here is what I ended up making a few years ago. Now these are made from moose antler. These are Iroquoian antler combs. And I'm here to tell you these are tough to do. This one here is my own design. I call it the loon. You can see uh, it pretty much looks like a loon. These are really thin. You have to grind the antler down and then you have to cut these teeth in. And I like to put them in little pedestals all their own so that when they're sitting there they, uh, they sit upright and you can admire them. So there's my loon. Back here I got playing around with a piece and I made what I call two otters. And this is a more traditional looking uh, antler comb. Again, and you see as these things dry sometimes or humidity in the air changes, they do twist a little bit from time to time. But this is a two otter comb that I made. Right next to that, 
uh, I have sitting to snipe. Of course, snipe with a long beak that they have for probing in the sand and so on. Uh, uh, it's quite appropriate. These two guys are hanging out together and again they're real thin and they're pure moose antler right from the pomaded section just past the beam where I use for a billet. Then I got playing around and uh, decided to make something very Iroquoian. This is the white pine or tree of peace and if you look closely you can see there's a wampum belt right here below it. So this represents a lot of things, uh, you know, the Tree of Peace, uh, uh, the Wampum, and uh, I actually love this comb and never want to part with this one. I don't want to part with any of them actually because they took so much work to make and uh, I just love, you know, having them. Here's a really basic one. You might even find something like this uh, uh, in the archaeological records. This is just a basic circle, but I call it a sunburst and this would be put in the hair you know when it's tied up into a bun and uh, I know there's people that know a lot more about these than me I'm sure that Lamoka Ghost can add to this but as I made these there was one in particular I wanted to make have you ever noticed that when two people walk together and hold hands that they form a heart between them and this is my love comb and uh, Actually, when I turn it around, there should be one who has the longer hair and uh, one who has the shorter hair, but it's kind of hard to see on this camera. But this is the comb of two people holding hands, uh, walking together, showing love. So, there's a little look into some other things that I've dabbled in in the past. Um, I really enjoy learning how things were made. Uh, that's why I flint nap. And uh, these, these combs are a result of my efforts and experiments and learning to make things that I would like to have someday and, and the only way I can have them is to make them myself. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed making all these things and sharing them with you.